Welcome to another community classroom with Michaels. Um, I'm here today. I'm Allie W. with Yarnspirations, and I'm here with Seema, one of our designers at Yarnspirations. We're, su we're super excited to have you today um, for another class. Um, today is, we are going to be teaching the, it's the Bernat Pinstripe Crochet Blanket, but it's definitely a super easy, fun, um, great, great blanket to get started with. Um, let us know where you're, where you're joining us from today in the chat. And as we get into the class, um, if you have any questions, feel free to um, just pop them in the chat here and I will make sure that I get them to Seema. Sounds awesome. good. Awesome. Welcome everybody. Wow, so should we give everyone like another? Yeah, let's give everyone another minute or so to get settled in. Okay, perfect. We've got people from all over here. Oh my goodness. Know. Omaha, know. North Carolina, LA, San Jose. New Jersey, Chicago, Ohio, Nevada, Brooklyn, San Diego, South Carolina. Oh my goodness. We have got some, someone from, I think we could probably hit every state here. If you're, <laughs> if you're from Alaska or Hawaii, let us know in the chat. Because <laughs> I haven't seen you. Yeah, that's really exciting. And everyone, if, while we're just waiting a couple more seconds, if you want to grab a crochet hook, if you don't already have one, uh, we're using a size USM. 13 slash nine millimeter crochet hook. If you have an eight millimeter crochet hook, that'll probably work as well. Um, or a 10 millimeter, we can try to make it work. And for the yarn that we're using today, it's Bernat Blanket. So, but if you just wanna practice, you know, the stitch with us, just grab any yarn you've got. Awesome. All right, so let's get started. Yeah, I think so. Um, okay. And Cynthia, saw your question here. Uh, the size hook again, mm -hmm. Seema? Sure, it's a US. Oh, I see why the question, it does make sense. Uh, so the pattern calls for a US M slash 13 nine millimeter crochet hook. Uh, I don't know why, but some people do list a nine millimeter as an N. So usually on your crochet hook, it'll have um, it lightly embossed. It's pretty hard to see on camera, but <laughs> usually in this spot here, you can read. And if it says M slash N or 13, um, but in terms of the millimeter size, because that usually indicate will be indicated, uh, look for nine millimeter. And if the yarn says eight hook, it's okay to use nine. Yeah, uh, sometimes the yarn, so this particular yarn on the ball band, um, usually on the ball band, there's like a bunch of information here that specifies the size hook. So it does actually say eight millimeter on here. Sometimes it depends on the pattern, like certain stitches look better using a smaller hook or a larger hook. Um, so we find it a bit more comfortable with a nine millimeter, but if you've just got an eight, you can probably make it work just fine. And uh, yeah, I'll talk everyone through what we're working on today. So if you haven't already, you should have received by email the pattern. So the PDF looks something like this. Um, it has all the information that you need for today's crochet pattern. It's called the Pinstripe Crochet Blanket. I wouldn't say it's your very first project, but I think if you're ambitious and you spend some time with it, it could be. Um, I know that a crochet blanket in Burnett Blanket was one of my first few projects, probably my second or third big project. So I think it's actually quite doable. Um, and the yarn that we're using today is called Burnett Blanket. So it's this super soft chenille machine washable and dryable, which is why I think a lot of people like it for blankets in particular. Um, on the ball band, you can see the weight of the yarn. It says it's a weight six, which is super bulky. So that's kind of one of the fun things about this is that it works up really fast. Um, so if you're not patient and you want to whip up something, you know, substantial and cozy, uh, it's a good one. The stitch pattern 
looks kind of like this. This is a swatch that I've done. Um, the pattern calls for two colors. So you've got your main color for the body and then you have these periodic stripes that take up two rows. So in the pattern PDF, you'll see that there was like a creamy white tone that we paired with a gray, which is really cool because very neutral works with anything, but honestly, you can have a lot of fun with it. Like if you wanted to do rainbow stripes or like blue, right, white and red, like whatever you want to do, you can probably make it work. Um, it's pretty forgiving. So for now, I'm going to get started with the pattern itself. So if you want to switch to hands, I'll start walking everyone through there. Perfect. So as you can see here, if you haven't looked at a pattern before. Um, it can be overwhelming at first, but I promise you'll be able to figure it out. So we've always got a photo of what your item is going to look like. We've got indication of what the materials are. So for this particular pattern, if you were to make it exactly as it is, you would need five balls of burnap blanket. This is the 300 gram size, it's pretty substantial. Um, and you would need one ball of the gray or the contrasting color for the stripes. For today's swatch, you can use whatever uh, you have on hand. And then, as we mentioned, it's a nine millimeter crochet hook or a US M slash 13. Sometimes uh, the hooks might say M slash N. And then patterns usually include abbreviations. So the reason is sometimes it can get really repetitive and long if you say the same, you write out double crochet every single time. So whenever you see things like DC, that means double crochet. If you see something like rep, that just means repeat. So you kind of get familiar with these abbreviations. If you're ever reading a pattern and you don't, you're not really sure what it means, always refer back to that and you can usually find a video to accompany that stitch. Then up here we've indicated the measurements. So if you follow the instructions exactly, your blanket should be approximately 52 inches by 63 inches. If you want to make it bigger or smaller, we can talk about that uh, as we're going through the pattern. Now, this is the fun section that not everyone likes to talk about called gauge. Um, I'll explain what that is when we get started, but essentially it's creating a swatch, a little sample that lets you see whether you need to use a bigger crochet hook or a smaller crochet hook. So I've made this swatch just in advance of the class and I'll talk you through how you can make one of these and figure out if you've got the right gauge. Um, in the instructions, we've got a section that walks you through the stripe pattern. So you're going to work 10 rows in the main color, which is like the beige, the creamy vintage white. And then you'll work two rows in the gray or your contrasting color. So later in the class, we'll talk about switching colors. And then um, we get into the instructions. So let's just grab your yarn and we'll get started. And the swatch that we're doing now, we'll use to check gauge. And I don't want to scare anyone off with gauge because I've noticed sometimes people have been a little panicked. So we'll talk about that part way through. Um, for clarity in the class, I'm actually going to use a worsted weight yarn just so you can really see what we're doing. Um, but you, which really shows that like this stitch pattern does work with different yarns, but you'll get a different size. So if you want it to turn out like the picture, I definitely recommend using the blanket yarn. So with every crochet project, you're gonna start with a slip knot. Um, essentially, it's like this. You wrap the yarn around, so you kind of form a loop. Then you, uh, let's see, you pull this part through and grab this tail end, and you've got a loop. So I'm gonna show that again, because it was a little hard to see. Woo, what have I done here? Okay, any kind of loop that you can get started with will help with the start of the project. Uh, I'm gonna slow it down for anyone who's just looking again. And if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat and uh, Ali will either read them out loud or sometimes I can look up and see, but it does fly away from that. And I'm also going to let everybody know we had a crochet 101 class a couple of weeks ago where um, 
we showed a couple of different ways to do a slip knot and we showed it quite a number of times because I know that that could be something that um, especially if you're a beginner, people might get caught up on. So I'll drop a link to that 101 class here in the chat in case anybody needs a refresher. Oh, perfect. So yeah, that'll be helpful because um, I think Tamara walked through quite a few options. Yeah. Um, so once you've formed that initial loop called the slip knot, you put that on your crochet hook and you pull on the tail end to sort of slightly make that snug against the hook. You don't want it so tight that you can't move your yarn back and forth, but you know, you don't want a giant either. Um, in this particular case, I'm right-handed, so I've got the crochet hook in my right hand and my working yarn in my left. Um, with this particular, uh, I saw somebody asking about the tail. The tail length really doesn't matter. As long as you leave about six to seven inches, that should be good. You just want enough that you can weave it in at the end uh, so that it doesn't fall out. So the start of the pattern, it says with MC, which is with the main color, chain 106. Now, obviously we just wanna make a small swatch. We're not gonna chain 106, but that for this particular pattern, you want to chain a multiple of two. So for ease, I'm gonna suggest we chain 12, um, just chain 12. So to chain in case you haven't need a quick refresher, but definitely reference that 101 class if you need a deeper look. Wrap the yarn around your hook and then draw through and that's one chain. So again, wrap the yarn, draw through. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And if you want, you can always go up and just quickly count to make sure that you've got 12 for our swatched. So I've got 12 here. And now this, we can actually follow along with the pattern and it'll make sense with the swatch here. So it says that we're gonna work our first row on that's gonna be the right side of the pattern. And we're gonna work one single crochet in the second chain from hook. So in terms of where that is, you're not gonna count this loop that's on your actual crochet hook. You're gonna start from here. So this is your first chain from hook and this is your second chain. And you see that each of these chains forms like a little V so we're gonna insert our hook into the second chain, wrap the yarn around our hook, draw through, and we'll have two loops on our hook, wrap the yarn again, and draw through both loops. And so we've got a single crochet there. Then it says we're gonna work one double crochet in the next chain. So a double crochet, you wrap the yarn around your hook, you insert it into the chain, Wrap the yarn around the hook again, draw through. So you've got three loops on your hook. Then you'll wrap the yarn around your hook, draw through the first two loops, wrap the yarn around your hook and draw through the last two loops. So that's a double crochet. So you can see uh, that a single crochet is pretty short and a double crochet is taller. And that's kind of what helps to create this bumpy texture that's really cool in the finished product. So the pattern then says we're gonna work another single crochet in the next chain. So again, insert your hook, yarn over, draw through, yarn over and draw through the two loops there. So we've worked a single crochet. Now the pattern says to repeat from the star to the end of the chain. So you'll see this often in patterns if you're not familiar, there's usually an asterisk or a star and whenever you see that, it just means start from there and just keep doing that, those instructions that follow it until you get to the end of the row. So we're gonna just alternate working double crochet and single crochet. So we'll wrap the yarn around the hook, insert, yarn over, draw through. We've got three loops, yarn over, draw through two, 
yarn over, draw through two. So I'm gonna do a single crochet, insert, yarn over, draw through. You have two, yarn over and draw through two. Now, if there are any beginners who are like, this is your first project and you're, you've never seen this before, definitely after this class, watch the Crochet 101 and just practice doing single crochet um, repeatedly and then doing double crochet repeatedly. Um, so like, I'll show again a double crochet. So you're wrapping the yarn around your hook. You're inserting it into that chain space for the chain. Yarn over, draw through. You've got three loops on your hook. Yarn over, draw through two. And yarn over, draw through two. So that's a double crochet and then single crochet. Um, Seema, we had a question uh, back in the chat about if you are starting chain, um, should it be loose or tight? Hmm. That's a great question. Um, you don't want it to be too tight because what will happen is your work will draw in. Like after you've finished your first ro um, row, your project will kind of be pulled in at the bottom. But you don't want it to be too loose because it'll then, you can never really fix that other than by trying to hide it with a border. So you'll end up having like a sloppy, sloppy edge there. So I definitely, sometimes I start a project and after I've worked the first row, I don't like how it looks. So I rip it out and redo that chain until I feel like it looks even. Um, even when you're working your chains, if you find that they seem to be coming out different sizes, get comfortable with that action first. Um, so for example, like if I'm forming some chain loops here, um, I'm trying to keep my hand in the same position and occasionally I'm going to move my thumb up the chain because that'll help keep the yarn stable and it'll help ensure that I'm keeping even tension as I move up the chain. Because if you left your hand down here, A, it would get really awkward and then you'll start getting loose and tight stitches all over the place. Play that. That helps. That definitely helps. Okay, so back to the first row. So I've started off doing the single crochet, double crochet, alternating, and now I'm at the very end of my chain. I've got one stitch left, and I'm going to work one single crochet. Now with this pattern, you're chaining, you're starting with a multiple of two, but that should leave you with an odd number of stitches. So I'm just gonna count. And if you're counting stitches, it's those Vs, each V is a stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Great. Um, so now we're gonna work the second row. And we're going to turn our work. So turn just means you flip the work to the other side. This is technically the wrong side, but this pattern, as you can see based on my swatch, is reversible, so it'll look good on both sides. So for the second row, we're going to chain three. So again, you wrap the yarn around your hook, draw through, that's one, two, three. Now in this case, the pattern says that chain three, it counts as a double crochet. So this here, we're gonna say that's a stitch. What this does, it's called a turning chain. It sort of sets the height for that row. Then the pattern says to work a single crochet in the next double crochet. So we've already worked this chain three here, counts as a stitch in this spot. So here is the double crochet from the previous row. We're going to insert our hook under both V's, yarn over, draw through. We have two loops on our hook, yarn over and draw through both loops. So that's a single crochet worked in that second stitch there. Then the pattern says to work a double crochet in the next single crochet. So the double crochet, we're wrapping the yarn over the hook, inserting it under those two V's, 
yarn over, draw through. So you've got the three, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. And then we're actually going to continue that the whole way across. So you're working anytime there was a double crochet, which is that taller stitch, usually leaves you with more of a bump. You're going to be working a single crochet into that. And anytime you see this lower part, it's called a single crochet, you're going to work a double crochet into that. So it's alternating. Um, and if this isn't super clear for you, I'm going to pull up a diagram I made that might make it a bit easier after I finish this row here. So again, just working single crochet and double crochet alternating. And if there's like a specific technique that you're stuck on, you can always leave a comment. And because this pattern is pretty short, I might be able to get through, you know, reshowing some of those techniques um, in the latter half of the class. And just a reminder to everybody, uh, this class is being recorded, so you'll be able to come back and rewatch it, slow it down, pause it as many times as you need. Mm -hmm. um, now for this last stitch, we're just going to work the double crochet at the end of the second row. And I'm actually going to pause here to pull up the diagram that I sketched out. Because for whether you're a new stitcher or not, it might be helpful if you're more visual. So um, not all patterns include a crochet diagram, but for this one I thought it'd be helpful, so I just quickly drew one out. Um, a crochet diagram usually uses symbols, much like abbreviations, to explain what each stitch is. A little loop like this means a chain. A plus symbol means a single crochet. And then the T with a slash through it means a double crochet. Um, so here I have drawn out a swatch that has a multiple of two chains. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So those are the 12 that we've got. And we start from the right side here and we worked a single crochet and then a double crochet. And we just alternated that the whole way across, ending on a single crochet. Then when we started our second row, we chained three. So you can see that's why it's stacked like this. One, two, three. And now we're working single crochets into the top of double crochets. So those are those tall stitches. And then double crochets into the top of the single crochets. And because they're short and tall and alternating here, they kind of fit in to make straight lines. Um, it, as you work on it, it'll kind of start to make a bit more sense. But if it's a bit easier, um, definitely take a look at this diagram after the class and the recording because it, I think it might be a bit helpful for the visual learners. So we're going to work on the third row now. And for the third row, you wrap your yarn around the hook, chain one. And then you're going to work a single crochet into that stitch. So when we worked the second row, chain three counted as a double crochet as a stitch. For various reasons that I won't get into, a chain one doesn't count as a stitch. It's just a little, helps you get up to the height that you need for your row, but don't call it a stitch unless the pattern tells you to. Um, so now we're going to work a single crochet into that first double crochet. So again, if you're, you're inserting your hook under the two Vs, wrapping the yarn around the hook and drawing through, so you've got two, wrapping the yarn around your hook and drawing through both loops. So single crochet, and then we're gonna work a double crochet, yarn over hook, insert, yarn over hook, draw through. We've got three loops, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. So now we're going to continue exactly as we were before, alternating single crochet and double crochet. Seema, does this stitch pattern have a different name? I want to say 
it's a griddle stitch. I, I think you might be right. I feel like I've yeah. seen it called that. Or is it a crumpled griddle stitch? Oh. I think it's called a crumpled griddle stitch because it's stacked. Like you can see how it forms very subtle kind of cube like design versus mm -hmm. I think griddle stitch is slightly more brick like. So the shapes are stacked. Um, I think you might be right. Ali, any uh, questions that you think I can help answer? So there's one question here from Dory. Um, how long do you think it would take to make the full blanket for an intermediate stitcher? Oh, I mean, I know times are always hard, but I figured I'd throw that one to you. <laughs> times are really hard because you may be experienced, but you might be a slow stitcher or you may be a really fast stitcher, but you don't have a lot of shows to watch on TV to get through a project. Um, I really don't know on this one. I feel like, let me think about it. If I did this swatch before this class and it took maybe 30 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't know. It's about, let's see the size, 10 inches by six inches. So in this weird math, I'm saying nine hours, I don't know, eight hours, ah. four hours. I Somewhere think that sounds eight, eight to 15 hours feels right for me. <laughs> I know. I threw you a hardball question there. <laughs> um, there's a great beginner question here, which I feel like we continue to see, but um, do you have any tips on what is the right way to hold your yarn to get tension? Um, do you have any tips on how to find the most comfortable way to hold your yarn? Oh, for sure. Uh, this is something that I actually even still change to this day. So if you're right-handed, it's, it's the same if you're left-handed, just in reverse, but uh, for this demo, it's gonna be showing my right hand. Uh, usually, for me, I actually wrap the working yarn around my index finger on my left hand, and I usually keep my fingers closed. That holds the yarn in place. Um, and I didn't actually realize I was doing this until I had to explain this to someone recently. I have the yarn passing through between my other finger here, my ring finger, and my pinky. So for me that, you can see here, I basically insert the yarn beside my pinky, around underneath these two, and then over my index. And I find that the most comfortable, and I kind of use my index finger just to hold the yarn steady. You don't want to pull, because what ends up happening is your stitches get shorter in height. Um, but I, that's how I do it. Some people, they don't need to hold it onto their pinky because they're a tight, they're somehow very tight at crocheting. So they just wrap loosely around this finger. I can't get even stitches that way. I usually need to have it through my pinky on that end. Or sometimes I'm pinching it. You might prefer to hold it down with these three fingers and then just wrap it this way around your finger. I say experiment with a few different ways until you feel like you've found a motion that doesn't get your hand sore. Remember to give yourself a little break because I do find when you're first starting, I used to keep my fingers so taut that my hands would cramp after. So, you know, balance. Um, awesome. And then um, there's another question here. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find it in the chat. Mm -hmm. I have lost it. I'm so sorry, Seema. <laughs> That's okay. Um, if you re-add your question to the chat, we'll, it'll come up for us. Um, I'm quickly taking a look at it. I see, how do you spell the name of the stitch? It's G-R-I-D-D-L-E, griddle, but I think it's crumpled griddle I, I just double-checked that. It yeah. is actually the griddle stitch. Oh, it is the griddle stitch. That's interesting. Yes. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
I wanted to just show the end of the third row here in case it's a little confusing. So at the end of this row, I've got two stitches left here. So you can see this short one is a single crochet. So I'm going to work a double crochet into that one. And then it says, oops, I did not work a double crochet just now. Let's redo that. And as always, if you don't like how something's looking, just unhook and pull gently and it's all fixable. So don't get disheartened if it doesn't look quite right from the start. Um, so I'm going to get back to the last two stitches so I can show this step. So I have to work my last single crochet in the double crochet, but at the end of the row, it might look a little different because your last, your first stitch on the previous row was actually a chain. So it doesn't look like normal most stitches. So for that one, you just want to insert your hook. Ideally, you can either work it under the two V's if you can get your hook in that way, or you can insert your hook through the center of the V as long as you've got two loops that you're going through um, and try to keep it consistent throughout the project. But honestly, it's not that noticeable. Don't tell anyone. Um, as long as it's holding together, I think you'll be fine. So that's the single crochet at the end of the third row. And you can see that in the diagram here as well. We started off by chaining one and then a single crochet worked into a double crochet double crochet worked into a single crochet and we alternated that all the way across. So you're going to keep doing that until you've got about four inches um, and that's where the fun word gauge comes in. So sometimes people start projects and they don't check their gauge. I do this too and I'm a designer. Does it make, because you know, I've gotten better. Uh, but it's important if you want your project to turn out how the photo looks, it's, it's a good idea to check. So on the pattern, under the gauge section, it says that eight stitches and six rows equals four inches in the pattern. So it's kind of hard to see in blanket until you get used to it, but I think you can figure it out. We'll put down our ruler here. And you're going to count how many stitches you have in four inches. So with this particular stitch, I like to look for the bumps that kind of helps me identify where the stitches are. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've actually got seven and a half, although my work isn't flat. I kind of want to do this one year. Reach that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Oh, so my gauge is a little off. Somehow I changed between this morning and now. Um, but that basically means I should have eight stitches here. So if I don't have eight stitches and I have fewer than that, so in my case I have seven and a half stitches, that means that I'm actually crocheting a bit loosely and I could potentially either go down a hook size, so instead of an nine millimeter, you would use an eight millimeter, um, or I could hold my yarn more tightly. Now let's say you've counted across and you've got uh, 10 stitches here, for example. That means that you're crocheting too tightly and you either need to loosen your grip on your yarn or use a bigger crochet hook. So a 10 millimeter would probably be a good idea. You can also check row gauge, although I find row gauge is very personal and not everyone it's kind of hard to adjust the way you crochet. It's not impossible, it's definitely doable, but it, you would check it just by counting, again, the same way you can look for the ridges in the pattern to identify where your rows are. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got six rows and four inches, which is what the pattern calls for. So that means that Aside from the fact that my stitch gauge is off slightly, um, my blanket should end up the same length and approximately the same width. But if I really wanted to make sure it was the same stitch or same width, I would change my hook size or I would add more stitches. So this particular pattern calls for 
106 stitches or 100, chaining 106 with 105 stitches. If you're finding your blanket's coming out a bit small, you could chain more. So make that a multiple of two. So you could do 108, 110, 112, and then take away, subtract one, and that'll give you how many stitches that you're ended up with. Um, we have a question here um, about if you could sh show maybe on both pieces, uh, identifying the single crochet and double crochet in your work. Yes. It is honestly tricky to see. I'm going to start with the blanket because it's harder, but this might be what you're working with. So that'll make life easier. So the single crochets have each stitch sort of has this V like shape. It's shorter. So that's how I identify it as double crochet or a single crochet. Double crochets are taller and therefore I find they tend to stick out more on this pattern. And because you're wrapping the yarn around your hook and drawing through twice, it sort of makes it a little bumpier. So that's how I can tell here that that's a double crochet and that this is a single crochet. So try to look at it flat here. So at the top, if I was looking at the top of my row, which might be how you're looking at it, this, um, I can see that this particular stitch looks shorter than this one here. So this here would be a single crochet and this would be a double because it's got sort of that bumpier post for the stitch. And in the swatch that I've done here with just some regular worsted weight yarn, it's a little tiny on this screen here. Um, let's see if I can, can kind of see the same idea that this here is a shorter stitch and this is a longer one. It's one of those things that once you start staring at it for a while, it does start to make a little bit of sense, but every stitch has that V at the top and then a post and the single crochet has the little V post and the double crochet has a longer post that's a bit bumpier. Hopefully that helps. Yes, that was great. Um, we had a couple questions come through about gauge. Um, mm -hmm. So there was one question, would you have to start over if you realized that your gauge was off in the middle of the project? I mean, it really depends um, on if you like how it looks, right? So. Your gauge could be off, but let's say you really like how your stitches look in a blanket, in the case of a blanket, I would say, you know, if you're comfortable with the width of your project, then carry on and that's totally fine. Um, I think for some yarns, it's a little bit more particular, right? Like with Bernat Velvet, for example, we recommend a gauge because we know that the stitches are gonna hold up better over time, you know, like we wash test our yarns to make sure that they hold up at that particular gauge. Um, so that's kind of why we tend to recommend them. Uh, let's say you're making a garment though, I definitely recommend adjusting your gauge because every stitch that you're off will adjust the width of your project. So you might be trying to get, you know, a 44 bust, but you'll end up with like a 34 because your stitch gauge is off. Awesome. I think that's a great help. Cool. I'm going to take a moment to show everyone how to switch colors um, as we've got a chance because the stripe is sort of crucial in my mind to this pattern. Um, so the way this pattern works is you work 10 rows. It has a little section called stripe pattern. You work 10 rows in the main color and then you switch to another color for two rows and then you go back and forth and you basically repeat that until you're finished the pattern ending on 10 rows of the main color. So to switch colors, let's say you've worked 10 rows. I'm gonna undo the stitch here. Let's pretend right now I wanna change colors right here in my project. I would start working, or in the next row, I wanna start working with this gray color again. I would work my final stitch, but I would stop partway through. So I'm gonna work a double crochet in this last stitch here. Yarn over, insert my hook, 
yarn over, draw through. Now with double crochet, you usually have three loops on your hook. You'll do yarn over, draw through two. But when you've got two loops left on your hook, you'll pick up your contrasting color, just using this kind of minty gray for demonstration. You'll insert or like lay that yarn over your hook. You'll draw it through those two last loops. So you've essentially finished the stitch. It looks like it's been finished in the pink or the main color, but I'm ready to start my next row with the next color. So then you'll actually just turn your work and continue using that new color as you work. With the gray or the contrasting color, because they're 10 rows apart, you will have to cut your yarn uh, every time you've cha you change your pinstripe color um, and leave about like a seven inch tail. And like when you're done your project, you'll use a tapestry needle, something with a big eye that you can thread your yarn through and basically weave it in and out of the stitches to hide those ends. But for the main color, because it's only two rows, I think in this pattern, you can actually just carry your yarn up the rows. So you don't need to cut your main color every time as long as you leave it loose at the end of the row. So here, for example, when I switch the pink, I'm just gonna leave the pink hanging and then when I'm ready to change colors again, I'll pick it up and start working with it. Might be one of those things that until you're really into the project, that might come up, in which case check out our YouTube channels and uh, you'll, you'll, find, you'll find a little tutorial for that. Okay. Um, checking out the questions here. If you have the right row gauge but not the stitch gauge, won't changing the needle size affect the row gauge? Oh, Dee has a great question. Um, Ali, I hope you don't mind me jumping no, in. No, go for it. Asking, you know, if you have the right row gauge but not the right stitch gauge, if you change your hook size, won't that affect your row gauge? You're right, it probably will, but it doesn't always. So this is one of those things about how you hold your yarn and how much, how taut you keep it. Sometimes, um, let's say you've got your right, the right row gauge. I find that your row gauge can sometimes be right across a few different hooks, not always, but um, definitely play around with it and look at how you're holding your yarn. If you're finding that you're not able to get the row gauge on a pattern and you really want to for a particular reason, then maybe try adjusting how you hold your yarn. So loosening your grip or tightening your grip um, to help with that versus you changing your hook size to help with your stitch count. There's a Question here, um, could you do one color for single crochet and one color for double crochet? Uh, I always want to say, of course you can, but I don't really know because you'd have to carry your yarn and I don't really know. I feel like it's one of those things you can try swatching, like do a little square to see. My concern would be where does the other yarn fit in? <laughs> yeah, my recommendation is to swatch that one. Um, maybe in the last five minutes, if I've still got time, I will uh, we'll swatch that. Great question here that um, I've seen on a few other classes about um, could you use your gauge swatch to attach it to the rest of a blanket? And I, I find that, um, you know, I, I guess we wouldn't recommend that, but um, I know one thing that I've seen 
people do with uh, like leftover gauge swatches is stitch them together for like a ton of different projects, um, like market bags, or you could do like a sampler scarf. Um, you could add pockets to things with your gauge swatches. <laughs> yeah, I actually, so obviously for work, I make a ton of swatches. I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do with all of them, but I've been saving them in bags with the idea that one day I'll make like this giant scrappy Afghan and then use crochet to join all the pieces. Um, some people like to keep it as a record of their work. So for certain yarns, if I'm working with it for the first time, I'll use one of those like gift tag labels and write down what yarn it was, what hook size I used and what pattern I used. And it's really helpful. Sometimes you think you're gonna remember all your projects, but really you might put down a project for years before you pick it back up again, or even next month you might forget what you were working on. So it's just a really good reference. So you can kind of use a, one of those D-ring hooks or something to sort of keep it as like a little swatch book for yourself. And it's a really nice record for yourself of everything you've made. So I definitely recommend hanging on to your, your um, gauge swatches. You can also, if you're not precious, you can rip it out and use the yarn for something else or for finishing your blanket if you're happy with your gauge. It's uh, then, you know, you don't have to worry about storing your gauge swatch that's a concern. Um, so we had a question come in. Uh, do you chain three at the end of any row or just single? Okay, so um, with our patterns, some patterns when they're written, they'll say at the end to chain. They'll say like chain one or chain three. Our patterns, we always start our rows with the chain. So our second row is always a chain three, and our third row is always a chain one. So those two rows, you basically repeat for the entire pattern, and you're always starting a, a row two with the chain three, and the third row is always with a chain one. Awesome. Um, Donna had a question here. Would you say this yarn is easy to work with for beginners or harder? Uh, you know, this is a tricky one because I would say for your very first project, maybe not, like maybe try out a cotton dishcloth with Tamara's 101 class that she did. That'll be a good first class. I think you could do this as your second though and ambitious if you're for your first. The reason I say that is that yes, it's a little trickier to see your stitches, but because it's a bulky, super bulky gauge, firstly, it's very satisfying. So you'll get through it a lot more quickly than you would with a worsted weight. And you'll also, because of the large gauge, you can actually see your stitches. Just make sure you've got really good lighting where you are, like daytime lighting, or you know if you've got a lamp, you know, shine it right onto your project and that'll really help. Um, and I find with, sim with a repeat like this, because it's a two row repeat, you start to get, it's a really good way to get the hang of a stitch and see your work quickly. Um, sometimes when you're working with a worsted like here, it's a little harder for me to identify where my stitches are on camera for you than using this bulky yarn because it's very quick. You can see whether the pattern actually looks like something then if it doesn't. Awesome. Um, we had a question here. If you could go over the ends, um, like the end of the row again. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can work uh, the second and third row quickly again for everyone. Uh, I've of course tangled everything. So I think I worked, where am I here? So this is a quick way of how I haven't kept track of my rows, but you need to either feel or look for your stitches to know where you are. So I can see at the end here, I've got a short stitch. So I've got a single crochet, and then I've got a double crochet. So according to my pattern, I know that if I had a single crochet at the start of my row, I need to be working uh, a double crochet into that. So that would be a chain three draw this 
out. So it's a bit, so I'm gonna do a chain three, single crochet, double, single, double. Sorry, doing this quickly, so it's a little messy, but just in case anyone's following along with that method. We're doing our second row repeat, but it's technically my fourth row here. So I'm going to chain three, wrap the yarn around my hook, and draw through one, two, three, and let's move this out of the way so you can kind of see. We're going to work the single crochet. So this chain three came out of this, you know, fills that stitch spot. So this V here, which is the second stitch, is where we're going to work our single crochet. So I inserted my hook under the V's, wrap the yarn, draw through, two loops, yarn over, draw through. So that was single crochet, then I'll do double crochet, single, and repeat all the way across. So at the end here, I'm ending on a double crochet. So when you're at the end of the row, you're wrapping the yarn around your hook, inserting it under the two Vs, which are the last stitch here before that little bump. Yarn over, draw through, three loops. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. So that's our fourth row, which uses the second row instructions. And I'll work on the third row again so everyone can see it, but if there are any other questions, I can uh, take those as well. Awesome, let me take a look to see if there's any in here. Oh, I'll just quickly talk through the start of the third row. So you're yarn over your hook and draw through, that's a chain one. Then you're gonna insert your hook under that first set of Vs, so that first stitch, Yarn over, draw through, yarn over, draw through two. That's your first single crochet. And then we'll do double crochet in the next stitch and then keep alternating across. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. It's really exciting to see so many people either learning crochet or just developing their skills as a stitcher. And always love to see how your projects turn out on social media. Absolutely. I feel like in these classes, I've seen a lot of comments from people who used to stitch and maybe hadn't in a long time and in the past couple of months have really like picked back up the hobby which I love to see as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, two things I'm going to show. So I'm at the end of the third row and a refresher. So you're working a single crochet into that top of the turning chain. So it's always it looks a little weird. Um, just insert your hook under two of those loops. So I like to insert my hook through the center of that V and then I'm catching that back little loop there, yarn over, draw through, yarn over, draw through two. And I saw somebody asked about finishing their work, which, um, yes, how do you do that? So whenever a pattern says fasten off, you basically, you can take your hook off, you've got a loop there, you take your scissors and cut, and, you know, leave about a six to seven inch tail, and then you, draw that yarn through that loop there and pull through and you've got a finished piece and you obviously a little square here but it's something um you will take the end of the yarn and thread it through a tapestry needle which has a bigger uh, eye for you to thread through don't try to use a sewing hand sewing needle it will be <laughs> impossible with blanket 
And then on the wrong side, it doesn't necessarily need to be the wrong side, but any way you can sort of thread it in and out of stitches so that you can hide those ends. I usually like to do, you know, about two inches in one direction and then one inch back so that it's really secure and then cut that end and you've kind of finished your piece there. Any awesome. last questions we should try to fit in, Ali, or we? Um, there was a question here and I, I think I covered it, but um, if you're just adding a new ball of the same color, you really do it the same way as, um, as you would a different color. Yeah, yeah, let's, uh, let's quickly show. So like, let's say I'm partway through a row. I'm gonna chain one, I'm just gonna make up what I'm doing here. Single crochet, double crochet. And then I'm like, oh no, I'm out of yarn. What do I do? So I usually, you'll make sure you leave yourself about a six inch tail. Don't, you know, leave yourself two inches. It'll be really hard to thread your ends in after. So get your second ball of yarn ready. Let's pretend that this pink or this gray is pink. Um, you'll insert your hook into the next stitch to start working the next stitch you normally would do. In this case, it's a single crochet. Yarn over your hook and draw through. Whenever you've got two loops left on your hook, that's when you grab the next yarn, wrap it around your hook, and draw through those two loops. And then very easily, we've joined our second yarn. And I've done what I told you not to do, which is I left myself a short tail. <laughs> so in this case, um, I'm just gonna pull to make sure I've got enough. I'm gonna loosen that up a bit. And then you basically continue with your new ball of yarn. And at the end of your project or partway through, you can weave in the ends from the previous rows. Hopefully that helped. Awesome, I definitely think so. Um, there's a great question here that's just about uh, starting any project that I think can be a little confusing, but um, to anyone who's new, when it says a uh, third stitch from hook about like your, your starting row, mm -hmm. um, are you always disregarding the stitch on the hook? You're always disregarding the loop on your hook. I hesitate to call it a stitch. So like, let's say I just formed a slip knot and I'm inserting, I'm gonna quickly chain one, two, three, four, five, six. So if a pattern said to me, insert my hook in the third chain from hook, you're not counting this loop here. You're gonna go count from below that. So one, two, three. So you're gonna insert into this one. Typically that's happening with a double crochet. So then you would work into that spot there. So yeah, don't count the loop on your hook. Awesome, I think that covers it. Awesome. Thank you everyone for being so engaged. So many questions. Hopefully I can a read lot. the chat after and apologies <laughs> if I missed your questions. I think um, great yarn community online. And so you can uh, definitely find people in the comments of our, both the Michaels channels and your inspirations. We can usually help if we've missed something for you. Absolutely. And thank you so much. Um, just a reminder, that all of our previous recordings are available on michaels.com slash classes and sign up for more um, future classes online at michaels.com slash online classes. Um, there's a ton of different options there for really any craft that you're interested in, but of course for both crochet and knit. Um, thank you so much Seema for today's class. This has really been great. Thank you. Thank you everyone and happy crocheting. Yep. Have awesome. a good one. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.